arthritis. So, uh, on a little different topic, uh, but similar, uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about security. And uh, part of my job is helping sites when people break into them uh, and trying to keep people from doing that. So uh, we do a lot you know, with companies when they're in the middle of an attack, but one of the things we also try and do is either train them or after the break in help fix things. So I figured I'd do a little bit of that first. Um, Drupal out of the box is pretty secure. We have a really good security team. They're looking at all the modules, they're looking at core, they're trying to find things, figure out ways to do it. But uh, it always comes down to the fact you know, that there are weak links in the chain. And we found that one of the biggest is just people choose bad passwords. And they're easy to brute force and they're easy to guess. Uh, very large companies that I am not going to name, uh, you know, they've had their sites broken into because they really chose things like password and, uh, you know, things that were the name of the site, uh, you know, with a one and, you one, know. One, two, three. The, yeah. I mean, what's involved in terms of breaking that? I mean, is it a machine that just runs through various codes to break it? Or is there some person? A thousand different things. We've seen it all the way down to, you know, stickies left on a computer monitor and somebody walked by and saw it. And, yeah. <laughs> you, you think of it, it's, it's, and it's things and that people, than yeah, people, people, so you really, there's nothing you can do to stop it. Uh, what you can do is you can put some pieces in place. We've put higher, I wouldn't say draconian measures, but you know, we've got more security on some of our stuff now. Um, you get that with uh, Google, you, you've got a lot more security about, thanks guys, thanks. Um, but keeping track of your site and keeping track of you know what you're doing around it, uh, monitoring logs and all of that is one thing. Uh, what I really wanted to talk a little bit about today was uh, mostly passwords. And I want to see if I can do a quick demo. Uh, we'll get down there. But um, there are a couple of good Drupal modules you should know about. One is the security module, which um, does a whole bunch of does a whole bunch of things to try and help make your site a little bit more secure, especially if you can't use HTTPS, if you can't do some of the basic preventions. Um, there's actually a Drupal.org security page that gives a lot of tips. Um, the module is a nice one. One of the things it does is it allows for uh, client-side password hashing, which means that you don't, even without HTTPS, you can encrypt your password before you send it back to Drupal, um, which is nice. Uh, on that note, uh, one program that I use outside of Drupal, uh, and that you guys should think about doing some uh, version of this for yourself. I've tried to get everyone. I'm having my 12-year-old, uh, you know, start to use it uh, because you really want to start early and just get in the habit of making good passwords. And the best way to make good passwords is. Well, never to have a password, but that's a different, uh, <laughs> there are other ways for SSH with uh, other topics. But um, when you do need a password, I never use the same password on any site. So I go to Facebook, I go to you know, e-coupons, I go to you know, somebody else's site. I, you generate a new password every time. Of course, it's hard to remember those. So you write them down. Uh, we all do this. Uh, the best way you can write them down, however, is in a program that encrypts them and keeps them safe for you. Uh, one password is the one that I use. Uh, there's also uh, a program called LastPass, which is very popular, and I may actually end up using this if I ever switch. But uh, LastPass is nice because it's also free. Uh, the premium allows you to use it on your mobile device as well uh, and keep the passwords you know, basically synced. Uh, but, and that is a whopping dollar a month uh, for premium. So one of the best deals around I've seen for this, uh, companies can actually get enterprise versions of this where they can help uh, you know, enact more stringent or uh, delete passwords, you know, have set passwords that are group passwords that everybody can use, but then they can be, uh, you can remove access so people don't have them later. I use less best thing so much for but the, yep. the one thing to keep in mind is the sharing, because there's two options when you share. You can share the password and they can view it, but you can also share the password and keep it hidden, which is useful yep. sometimes. Um, there, are, there are ways to get that hidden password, so 
if you do use similar passages elsewhere and you're sharing something, make sure that that yeah. at least the passage you're sharing here. Wait, wait a minute. You say share. So I, if I needed you to log into one of my client sites and make changes, I can share a password with you, not okay. reveal the password yeah. to you. It's just when you go to that website, it will auto-fill the password field. Yeah. Copy and paste doesn't work, but there's way, there's really, really sophisticated ways to get around that. Yeah. Always assume somebody has that password, but it's yeah. <laughs> if you if you're doing that. Yeah. However, it um, you know password rotation policies, password uh, retention policies, password strength policies. Uh, definitely for your sites, you probably want to think of a policy uh, that you want to have. Um, it really comes down to how many users you have that are not uh, going to you know, leave your site because of the password policies. Uh, at some point, you have to make that decision. But in general, the level of uh, people saying, OK, uh, I respect that. You you know, you're taking my privacy seriously is actually worth a little bit of burden. Um, you can, with most of the modules and things that I'll show you, you can actually uh, set different parameters for admins versus just users who are commenting, you know, users who are buying things from you, you'd want to keep that barrier as low as possible. But then again, if you're taking e-commerce, you probably want to make it a fairly high level um, to begin with. Um, there's a Drupal module called Password Strength. Which really is the, it's the basics of trying to help make sure you define strong passwords. Um, we've all, I don't know, heard of what makes good passwords with mixed cases and, and substitutions, and uh, those are getting to be brute forced uh, a lot more common now. There's uh, some good reading you can do about password entropy and you know whether or not uh, a sentence in a book is actually a better password because it's actually um, you know with punctuation and you can usually remember it very straightforward but it's this long and uh, you know isn't going to be brute forced very easily um, so there's a lot of different techniques you can get at uh, oh yeah the xkcd comic is Look up just XKCD and password, and you can read all about it. But please, you know, correct horse battery staple is no longer a good password. Um, <laughs> but the idea being that random words are easier to figure out. But if anyone knows that you're doing this, then you've actually just made your uh, alphabet bigger, but your words are all four characters long now. Uh, in, this, in essence, so you have to you do some mixing and matching of these ideas um, to get really good things. But um, password policy is a module that lets you set constraints so that you can't uh, you 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 know users physically can't choose a password that's not up to what you set as the policy. Um, it will be it already has Drupal 8 compliance, so that's good. Um, there's another one, login security uh, and flood control, which do a little bit more about trying to stop people from brute forcing your site. Drupal has some uh, built-in flood control mechanisms, but nine, they're all hidden variables. In other words, they're in code, but there's nothing in the UI that lets you set or adjust how they work. Uh, this module is just a uh, UI to those variables. If you hit the flood table, you need this unlock or you need drush. Yeah. Yes. So if you've ever had, if you've ever logged in too many times and been locked out, you know, you there are ways to get around it. This just gives you a UI for it. Um, currently, my one of my favorite things uh, that you should take advantage of whenever you can is called two-factor authentication. Um, two-factor authentication is the idea that you have a password and something that's generated, usually what's called a one-time password. Um, so it's the phrase is something you know and something you have. Um, so I have my phone. Uh, it'll generate a code for me. Uh, I know my password. I type that in. It asks me for the code that came from my phone. So the combination of those two things really makes it a lot more secure so that if somebody you know sees my sticky note, they also have to get my phone. If somebody has my phone, they also have to, you know, see my sticky note. 
No, I don't really have sticky notes in my password. <laughs> um, so it, it helps to move it along. Um, we At Aqua, we've installed it in a couple of sites uh, that we use. I've used uh, TFA for Dropbox and Google and some of the other sites. Uh, um, GitHub and Facebook, you probably, you know, the more that these hacks go on, you, you most sites that are offered, it's really nice to be able to put it on. Yep. 